So that's great. So right now we are joined by Mike hey. Kearns of the Churning Group. Uh, Mike, welcome to the show. Uh, actually, you and Dave had the first day Portnoy show back in 2016. So it's kind of like a reconnection here. Yeah, we we're sitting in a van in a parking yeah, lot. Yeah, Super Bowl. In San Francisco. Yeah, Super Bowl. You remember that, Dave? Yeah, yeah. And the tech was uh, better then than setting this up. Uh, so we're, 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 we're the only people not using here. Zoom, yes. I guess, because <laughs> Pete thinks he has a super server for, I guess, Skype that I don't even think exists. <laughs> I texted Eddie. I'm like, I hope Skype's paying us millions of dollars to use Skype. I haven't used Skype since I was in college. And I have like literally 20 minutes of anxiety trying to figure out Skype this morning. And I, te I texted Eddie earlier in the week. I'm like, all I care about is that Marcella knows the details, so I don't need to worry about exactly what I was doing, creating passwords, creating accounts, <laughs> downloading Yeah, I don't apps. know why we use Skype. I mean, we, just, we had a guest on before you. No, they're not paying. Are we had not, a guest on before you, and it barely worked, too. So I guess we – I don't think there is such right. a thing as a Skype super server, but it's like news to me. <laughs> we got to get Deirdre to call Skype. I mean, we're, we're giving Skype millions of dollars of either – it might be bad yeah, media, it but free. it's at least free media, right? Yeah. Good. How you doing? So, Eddie, are you running this interview? Good. Yeah, let's do it. So, obviously, like I said, it's like almost <laughs> five years later. Uh, we thought it'd be cool to bring you on, Mike, because so much has changed, so much has happened. Obviously, there was another sale. And uh, I, I will start with this kind of. And I listened to your pet, the interview from almost five years ago. Uh, earlier in the week and I kind of just want to go back on a couple questions here uh, a big thing when you started uh, was that dinner you guys went to you and Dave went to a dinner and you said that there was there were some impressions and you weren't sold to buy it is there anything you could kind of go into more now that everything is done what happened at that dinner I'm so interested on in how that went down Just the whole what? deal. Like, you walked away and you're like, you weren't sold. Like, you're like, I don't know if this guy's just funny, but I don't know if he could run a business. You know, I don't know if there's well, I, a, that, a business model. Yeah, there. that that's no, wrong. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I, I don't think so at all. I think I was completely, I mean, I, I remember saying, I think on the interview before where I walked away from that dinner saying, okay, Dave's someone that you could do business with. Like, he seemed very, like, direct, very professional. He, he's the one who had the vision for, moving everyone to New York and creating this kind of, you know, fantasy factory meets 24 seven Saturday Night Live. And, and that was really what opened my eyes as to, I, I, cause I always liked Barstool. I thought they were funny. I knew it was more than just like a, a site, but I didn't know how big it could get. And then when Dave talked about that idea, I'm like, Oh, this could be, this could be huge. So then it was just a question of like, can we actually work with him? Was he okay bringing someone like Erica in to help build the business, which he was like, he was on board with from day one. There was never even a question. So then it was just doing the actual deal from that point. But I was pretty sold after the dinner that he was someone that we could work with and that it could, that this could be a really big interesting. Business. Cause I know you said you didn't know for sure. I guess maybe, maybe you were like 80% sold. I don't know. Regardless, that was the word. So maybe, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I guess I guess you never really know until you start working with someone. But as far as in as much as you can get confidence or conviction in something from one meeting, I was pretty high after that. Yeah, meeting. and that, that, sure. I kind of felt the same way. Like I, I, I thought it was there, there. I thought there was a decent chance something could happen from that meeting. And a big part was was you were you know people were shocked that you let them take a majority stake. But you said, and the quote was, I was 100% convinced that the content would never change, so I wasn't worried about giving up the majority stick. Okay, five years later, in your eyes, Dave, in your eyes, Mike, has there been a big, sw a big swing in content change? For me, I, I mean, in, in, in if I was giving the churning guys, like, maybe the biggest – thing that they lived up to was they really never interfered in content at all um and obviously we have like controversies that have hit us through the four or five years and i've never heard from them like oh maybe retract apologize that they just kind of let us do their thing the content has changed because we've gotten bigger and the world has changed and we have to be more careful but that has always been driven by me um, or mutual like conversations with Erica, but there's never been a point 
where it's like, hey, I want to do this, and somebody else management will say, whether it be Chernin, even whether it be Erica, now Penn is like, no, you can't do that. That has never happened. Um, and I mean, I think that's kind of the selling point. It's like, I'm not a crazy person. It's always been a business. Uh, so we'll, we'll alter the content to make Barstool better or with the times or not to get, you know, roasted or whatever it may be. But it's still, I feel pretty confident that whatever I want to do in terms of content, we can do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think I've ever reached out to Dave or we've reached out to Dave ever on a content thing. I mean, I'm sure we've had conversations with Erica of like, ugh, or oof, but, you know, it, 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 we just move on. We, we've never, you know, I, I most of it, honestly, Eddie, I think we, we, we laugh at just as much as everyone else. You know, like the whole like AOC union thing is one that came to my mind, you know, in advance of this interview where it was, I, we were literally getting calls from like, investors lawyers other you know people who don't get barstool at all thinking like oh my god like this is going to kill the company the investment the government's going to come after them and and we literally were like this is the biggest this is the funniest storyline of the week at barstool right I mean, we did our heart and i do think mike up brings inch, something up you know? i think does um, sometimes happen if there is a little cringe or ooh and credit to erica i think she gets a lot of it and she just shields me she never like yeah <laughs> like it'll come out like oh i got yeah. these emails yeah. but you know erica and i are so on the same page but part of what she i think she deals with a decent amount of that maybe never hits my desk but i've never felt pressure from like oh my god we have churning or pen or whoever it may be it, it if something I feel is off limits, I would probably feel like it's off limits or wrong, regardless of who you're doing business with. And I, yeah, I agree. And I I think when when we have reached out to Erica, it's been it, it believe me, it's never been like oh we need to change something or oh can you talk to Dave. It's more like a uh, oh well that that's what you're doing with this week, you know. So have there been any other rocky moments? Has there been anything else there, whether it wasn't about content? Whether it was about something else, you guys have had like a big disagreement here on in five years. I mean, there was a well, we've had. I think we've only had one real disagreement. There's been another time when Dave, uh, you know, I I, I yeah. think when the whole van talk thing went down, um, you know, I, I think we could have handled that better. Um, and I've I've said that to Dave. So, you know, uh, first of all. For uh, Dave, I've heard Dave say this a lot recently, and I totally agree with him. And I, I remember agreeing with him at the time. So, for the record, that I didn't think Van Talk was uh, a huge deal for Barstool, right? I think it was a bigger win for ESPN. I remember, um, you know, we were we were at a Super Bowl and they were doing the um, the show on Comedy Central, and I'm like, holy shit! Like Barstool is making Comedy Central ten times more relevant than Comedy Central is making Barstool relevant. And I felt the same about ESPN. I think, you know, other people were more excited about being part of ESPN. Um, and when when it got canceled, there was a whole flurry, right? You know, CEO of ESPN was calling us. People were all calling each other and freaking out. And uh, the, the main thing that was the concern, we were about to do another yep. investment. Um, you remember we invested first time and then we were gonna invest again and we we were worried that Big Cat and and PFT were going to go off the rails, right, in terms of like, oh, Barstool is going to, you know, tank our careers and never let us succeed. And I'm putting words in their mouth, but effectively, they, 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 you know, there was a concern that they were not going to be part of Barstool, maybe. And I remember saying to Dave, like, let's let's take a beat and figure out where Big Cat and, and part of my take and all that is. And that, I think, uh, you know, in hindsight – Maybe I could have said it differently. Maybe I should have done, not not even brought it up. But I was honest with them. I said, "Look, we should we should figure out what the repercussions of this is." Not that Van Talk got canceled. I didn't really care about that, and I thought it ended up being a big win for Barstool that we kind of rallied the you know troops around the the pirate ship. But I did think it caused some destab in, you know kind of lack of stability for Big Cat in particular, uh, and that really I think you know, got Dave upset. I'll let him, you know, describe it himself. And we had to, you know, we had to, you know, kind of get back on track, but it was only literally, it took a day to figure it out, but it, it was yeah, a bump so, in the road. I described. Yeah. That that's accurate. So in, in the back, they were doing an investment. 
churn in to give us more money. And, and it basically also got a little money for like the guys involved. And in the timing of it, we had the agreement. And then Van Talk, all the shit that swirled with Van Talk happened. And it happened in the middle, basically, if I'm in my memory of like we've reached like a verbal agreement to it being like officially done done and in the middle is when van talk got like canceled so it's like all right we got like mike said it's like we got to take a step back because we're not sure you know the mindset big cat pft all that stuff that did piss me off um and we i actually i flew to la and met because yeah. i was basically like yeah uh, my, yeah. my philosophy and kind of i think mike will probably back this up like once I have a deal or once it's like it, it, it almost the numbers become irrelevant. It's like, nope, we had a deal. And to me, while devastating, and there was, I, I, I mean, I've known Big Cat forever, so I, I probably wasn't as worried. But it, it's like at that point in Barstool, I feel like I was doing a ton of business stuff, right? And it's like I kind of content-wise taken a little bit of a step back. I was much more working on growing all this other stuff. And I – have always viewed Barstool. I'm like, even worst case scenario, disaster scenario, PMT goes away, something happens. Like, I have ultimate confidence. Like, all right, I'll just step more back into content, rally everybody around, and we'll come out of this stronger. Like, I'm never worried about that. So it's like, you're with Barstool. Like, w we always make it. So I think it was basically, and we yes. met with Peter. It's like, here, I was, I, I was off put. It's like, we have a deal. The two options are you honor the deal where I'm basically like done. And it wasn't just me. It affected other people like other people. Ha yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And and like I said, it was, we we you know, we we uh, we didn't let's put it this way. Our conviction never changed, Eddie. And we were always going to do the deal. But in that in that moment, you know, I, I, and I'll fall on the sword. Like I said the wrong thing at the wrong time. And, you know, we we. We made peace yep, with it and that, moved that, on. That, that was, was a bump. bump. And then there was so. a little bump at the end with the uh, pen deal. Mike got mad at me and hung up at me on me. And I was – but you're oh, also man. like oh. – and I won't go that, into the numbers. Was, I'll tell you – But I'll tell you I, one like, thing. Yeah, go ahead. I'll tell you one thing. Let me let me just say this. Let me just say this because, like, I, I have to say, like, I mean, a lot of the shit got cut from the whole, like, documentary. But I did a long interview – um, and I said, one of the things they kept was this is a once in a lifetime, you know, investment. And, um, you know, the, Dave hasn't made any bones about it. Like he's made, you know, I love how he, he's made during group hundreds of millions of dollars and all this stuff. And like the, 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 the truth of the matter is like he, he has, I mean, Erica, uh, gets, you know, a ton and ton, if not the most credit, cause Dave's always been Dave. Right. I think Erica really helped. But here's a question. Here's a question before level. we continue. And, and I've always wondered and, that. Yeah. I don't think Eric is here without me. Oh, I don't, that's a whole other story. I've heard you say but that. But it's the true. Pomp interview and stuff. I remember, I remember calling you, setting that meeting up, being like, I think we found the CEO of Barstool, but I want to make sure. And like, you know, Jesse was the one who first. Wait, 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 wait. I what? worked with her at Yahoo. And then we. we I yeah. know you didn't set Jesse, up Erica. Jesse had a meeting with her. You don't no. think that we connected you with Erica? Dave, Through how do Betsy you think Morgan. you met Erica? No, you're wrong, Mike. No. I called you Let's up. Let's call fight three, baby. No, fight you, you, three. You're wrong. I the I met I met Erica by happenstance with Betsy Morgan and called you and said I had to do you know who Erica Erica Nardini is? And you're like, Yeah, she's the CMO of AOL. I go, I just met her in a coffee shop. I love her. And then you called her up to see if she was interested. We had we we knew Erica very well. Yeah, but we you never suggested her. So we had a recruiting firm that I met seventy guys and didn't like any of them. Maybe we didn't suggest her because we were worried that we knew who she was working with at the time, and we thought it was better to go through Betsy. Unless or you, like that. unless you we, sneaky set up the we, Betsy Morgan meeting, which Erica's never said. Er, Betsy Morgan has happened to be in a coffee shop across the street from where I lived. Yeah, well, well, we're figuring out on the pod. We can get her. A, I should call her right now. I know that's how well, I met her. 
Yeah, look, you might have been introduced through Betsy, but I remember Jesse meeting with Erica with when she was running that or working at that other couple of being like, oh, my God, Erica would be perfect for Barstool. And I don't remember the chain of events of like how. Well, yeah, I called you guys you and said you loved her, but so didn't think she was Erica, available. And then you placed the call and she's and then she's like, well, let me meet with him again. We went to a restaurant and then she met all the guys. OK, let me ask you this. Do you think Erica takes the CEO job no. without churning group? Meaning well, I wouldn't have even been looking. OK, well, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't have even been that? looking like we, without without. Right. OK, but well, if you were if you were if you were looking, if you were looking and you met Erica at the copy shop, do you think well, she would have joined? That, no, without? I mean, I don't know how I would have ever been lo like I would have had to take in something would have had to change. It would have had to been like a replacement churning group like that. Like that's an implausible scenario. Like I would be in Boston right. looking for a CEO. Like I. How did you meet? She how did you meet out Betsy to me? Morgan? I think she's a Nantucket woman. So she, yeah, so and then we just, met, she just yeah, and then you, we met at like you. the dream and she was like a little advisor, right? She was like the first in, in it paid in, in spades because she was the one who happened to be like, Hey, do you mind if a friend's there? And, and Erica was a huge Barstool fan. So we just hit it off. And then I remember I called you guys and you knew exactly who she was right. and you guys like, she's awesome, but I don't think she's available. And then maybe Jesse or you reached out and, and she's like, Oh, I just started this new company, but I do love Barstool. And that started the process. Right. Anyway, Erica's amazing. 100%. Thank God we got Erica and it has obviously, you know, uh, and, um, and anyway, my point, what I was going to say is it's been an amazing investment. We have this amazing result with Penn, which Dave and Erica met Penn that definitely had nothing to do with us. And, uh, we obviously were very involved in all the discussions with Penn from the very beginning. And we get this deal basically at the literally like the one inch line. We're first in goal on the point one. And we have a conversation and Dave, you know, calls me a bunch of names. I I've literally never been called these names in my life. Like, forget. I don't remember. I called you. It like had to be all along the lines of green, as like right? fucking. Oh, I, it, it was, I was getting, it was like, I was getting picked on as like a sixth grader and I hadn't grown into my baby fat or something, you know? And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I, and I'm like, I, I, I consider Dave like a great business partner, kind of like a friend. And I've, I've, I've stuck up for him and gone through a lot of shit. And we're, at, we're literally about to have the greatest thing that's ever happened to me as an investor and definitely ever happened to him professionally. And he's like, I'm going to walk away from the whole fucking thing. And I know he will, like, I definitely know he will. And I am just sitting there wearing everything he's saying to me, just remaining, trying to be as calm as I possibly can. I remember coming, I was in my driveway right here. I came inside to my wife and I'm like, that was the worst conversation I've ever had in my life professionally, like ever. Um, but we got, we got past it. You know, so, it was, uh, imagine the worst dress down anyone's ever had at Barstool times with a million, multiple hundreds I, of I don't remember it magnitude. being that bad. You know? <laughs> I remember it. I, it I, pretty, I, I've it had some bad ones, like in the bad. schema. Now, like, I don't remember. I, I just remember being along the lines of greedy. And, and just to clarify for people what is walking away, I, this, I was not fighting on my behalf on this point. This was, uh, I, it, it was Big Cat. I wanted, basically, he deserved, he needed, we needed, we're getting this payout. It's gambling that we're doing, so he's fucking key, and I want to be psyched. And it was ar around that, and, and I was, like, it had to be done. And I felt they were being greedy, and, and I also, at that point, had you in, like, agent shoes, which is part of it, because you are a background agent, and I'm like, they are just, they're being agents, and that's how I viewed it, and it's like, I would have walked away. That's always, I think, for better or for worse. I had this with Kamal when we did our first deal. It, I know. I remember I remember that. I heard it, you tell that it was story like, the other day. That's true. That's it. I remember calling you. It was <laughs> over the was lawyer over fees. Something ridiculous. It was, it was like a nothing my, thing, but I was like, they yeah, said yeah, yeah, they're yeah. paying for my lawyer fees. And Kamal's right. like, well, we're not. I'm like, well, I'm out. Right. <laughs> right. Right. I remember that. Anyway, I, I think that, look, obviously we've, we've, uh, we think Big Cat's amazing. We've, we, I mean, look, you got to say that over the five years, has there anyone been anyone saying that Big Cat's more valuable than us? 
You know, I mean, oh, we're yeah. big fans of Big Cat no, too. No, no, no. I, I don't want it to come come construed that like we no, were trying it, to no, and it wasn't a screw. It was a, it was a di- it was oh. ju- it was additional. So it wasn't that at all. And there actually have been no bigger fans of Big Cat than you. And I mean, I deal with you most of the time, right? And 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 le- le- look, let me try to take the high road here. Like when when we did the first deal, right? Um, uh, five years ago those guys didn't have equity like big cat kfc k marco uh gaz like the the original crew and we said to dave we're like they should probably get some equity and to dave's credit dave actually gave them all equity from his uh piece of the deal and and that was like above and beyond i remember saying to them like i don't think i'm like we could split that we could do that from kind of a new option pool and dave's like no like i'll take care of these guys i don't even know if those guys even fully appreciate how much Dave gave from his part of it. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm returning the tough moment with a compliment about a little history of like very, very generous action on Dave's part that those guys probably don't fully. Yeah. I've, I think I've never appreciate it maybe that, more uh, now history. because it's like when the fruit, like we didn't. Yeah. When you do <laughs> it in real something. time, it, it, but you know, the, the original guys, all that I have, I've had, and we've talked about K okay, Marco. I've had my ups and downs with recently. I've certainly had my ups and downs with KFC, um, big cat. It, it's like a band that's been together a very long time now. And there's always going to be that, but it, it's clearly, yeah. clearly worked out. And, you know, again, I, it, I get asked all the, and you've probably heard me say, I, I don't. And sometimes, you know, as I'm moving, moving, I think, and I even said in the real deal, like when we did the first deal and how much money it was worth, I was making a good amount of money. But what Churn and brought and what they did bring, and it is different sides of what Mike said, like would Erica come here? I needed a company that would give us credibility and was not going to meddle with the content. And, and really, Churn and lived up to both those errors and spades. I don't probably think I give enough credit to them Because as Mike knows, I don't think even Mike knew when we did the deal how twisted a lot of what we say gets and how hot it can get in our world. And and they never, never once were like, "Eh, you guys got to think about changing. They, You know, would I have liked Peter once to be like, I support him publicly? Yeah, but he never said I don't I don't support him really when things got hot. And that's hard. Not a lot of people would do that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, look, I, I I think the other thing that's really interesting part of the journey has been, you know, several times Dave uh, would be, you know, Dave's doing all the content. He's more involved in the business than people realize. The business, even though he says he doesn't want to do the business side, he's always doing the business stuff. He can't help himself. And there's been several times way before Penn entered the picture where he's like, I fucking need to go to, you know, Nantucket more. I need to, uh, I want to be less involved. I want, I want more money. And and I, I, he deserved more money. He, he did. It it was fair for him to be like, look, I could go sit in my, you know, backyard in Nantucket and make millions of dollars and do a podcast, you know, a couple hours a week and sell some t-shirts on my own. And I could be, you know, richer than rich and not have to deal with this whole company and this whole brand. And we, you know, all of a sudden we're obviously sitting there and going, we have tens of millions of dollars at this company. If Dave did that, it, he, he would have, you know, potentially created the value of the company. And I, but we always tried to figure out a way to like say, Dave, go to Nantucket more. We'll get you more money. Like we, we tried to figure out a way all along. Cause there's, you know, there's been a lot on Dave through this, uh, you know, obviously five years with us and then 10 years, yeah, that 10 plus was, years overall. Yeah, so that was a major he's been a great partner. concern for me as we're moving towards the obviously the sports gambling changed it where I could see a light. But and we'd have these conversations where it's like, essentially, how am I going to get out of this thing? Like, I'm so tied in and I'm working so much. It's like at some point I want to take a step step back. And I wasn't sure. Now, the gambling thing I love, it's inherent to what I do. So it did re-motivate me. But that was certainly, you know, I think it's probably a little bit when you look at like uh, uh, you want to get in the psyche of Dan without getting the psyche of the PMT. It's like, okay, what's my – like everyone has that to a degree. And I've been doing Barstool now 17 years. So it's like at at, I'm getting up there. It's like 
am I ever going to be able to take a step back? And I was, and it kind of rolled. And now, ironically, I'm working harder than or longer than ever because of everything going on. But I do remember, Mike, when we were doing the pen deal, and I didn't know whether to take it as a compliment or an insult. You said you want to represent me as my agent next time because you're like, I'll get you a much better deal. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I remember even when we did the new deal, this new deal, um, so basically Dave had to create a whole new contract for himself as, as the part of this pen deal. And somehow I got stuck being the person he had to deal with after he, I think it was after you I think it was before. The dress down was literally down on the- like the, <laughs> the minute before the deal was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, look, Dave, like, you know, we're, we're still shareholders, but I don't, I, I honestly don't care how much money you make. And I think you should make a lot more than you make now. So I was kind of like, just tell us what you, and then I was going back and forth with Penn and we're, we're all trying to do what's fair. But I, I've always agreed that, you know, Dave's fundamental argument that if Dave wanted to make more money, he could probably make more cash doing something on the side. And how I viewed you know, it, I, I get that. I'm not, like wildly great like there's a lot of money for me to be made i've made more than i've ever take care of i don't have it it's coming at the end and i'll take care of like all the guys so i i kind of look you know and obviously it's going far better than we ever dreamed but yeah it it, it and it's an interesting world because i'm in yeah, something that's strange say, like-, like i am in a very rare situation here where i'm under contract but then I'm going out trying to find new talent and negotiating their contracts. And sometimes I'm paying people who are trying to bring in like more than I'm getting. And it's like, this is kind of crazy, but that's the role I'm in. You know, it's like, I want to keep yeah. their contracts down because yeah, it's good for no, bar stools. Right. So it's a weird spot. I get that. I get that. Right. But at the same time, you, you, you know, if you're just talking about money, which we're talking about, we're talking about money now. You made a lot, lot more through your equity in Barstool than you no would doubt. have if you made a few more million dollars a year. No you know, doubt. Li- I mean, everything worked yeah. out, which yeah. you always firmly yeah. believed uh, <laughs> with with it. And then here's yeah. a question that I have for you. Obviously, the stock price, if you went back in time, mm-hmm. like, do you ever like, oh, shit, we sold it? Yeah, I, I totally. 100%. I say that. All, I mean, it's amazing how many people call and first of all they they think we're idiots for just doing the pen deal overall i'm like i totally disagree i think it was the right thing for for because what people don't understand Mm -hmm. is where your head was dave how scared how you how concerned you were that there wouldn't ever be a buyer because of all the controversy blah 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 um so pen was the perfect partner because you loved sports betting since the day we met you and you know they were comfortable with they really understand the uniqueness of the brand and they were comfortable with some of the baggage. Um, and then two, you know, should we have taken some of the deal in retrospect and pen stock? Of course. Right. And, and we, and you know, and the truth is we never even really talked about it that much internally or with pen. And we should have probably given that. But what about even the value? The, what, like is that, where, when the stock shot up, we're like, Oh shit, we should have sold. And I don't know that they would have, but I mean, we literally gave them the price and they just, accepted it which no i know i i i think look i think i know i don't question the price the 450 i really don't what i question is from a churn in perspective maybe we should have taken some of our barstool stock in the form of pen stock and just stayed on the pirate ship with you guys you know because the way it worked is kind of you and erica and big kind of team going with pen and 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 honestly we we just never even talked about it very much so i i remember talking to peter and jesse we're like we, sh- we probably should have. You know, and, you I know, think a lot of that. Hindsight's 2020. But, probably, uh, and this is from an outside. You, like you said, you never really met. J- I think your concern was we believe in Barstool. We don't know much about Penn. Are they going to be able to execute? Yeah, totally. I think if you met Jay, you would have had more confidence. But yeah. like, okay, this is a pretty sharp totally. guy. Yeah. I agree. I Oh, I, I've met him now. And, I mean, you know, we, we've had a bunch of conversations with him about ways Bart churning can get more involved. Because, I I mean, we obviously believe in you guys and we believe in sports betting. And the biggest concern has always been to us, like, can they figure out the tech and the product? And, like, can their tech and product group work with you and Erica and Big Cat the right ways? And, you know, I, I was dying. I When yeah. Eddie reached out to me, I was – you're, you're – you're, your whole thing about the the guy not calling you back for three hours and pen and I'm, I'm the first phone call you should take other than the CEO. I'm like, 
I'm like, I was, it's like brought me back to so many feelings of early days of, uh, of working with you. So, and I agree with you, you should be the first, but you know, yeah. you're the most valuable and, person at that company. And so they try to twist that. I don't, the, I don't and, and now it's a whole new thing. They try to twist that, make it seem like I'm doing lies. It's like, we're trying people who don't like us. Like we're somehow involved in the book. It's like, we're trying to get a hat promo on. We're trying to just get the hat on the website. So yeah. Um, it's been a wild ride. It really has. Oh, Getting some pub here. Nice hair. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, Eddie? I, yeah, no, Mike, you also said a big thing from the, the first pod was, uh, in Chernin's eyes, it was a small partnership. At the end of the day, his name is on the door. You mentioned that in so many words. How much has Barstool exceeded his expectations? Like, have you had sat down with him and he's like, holy shit, like this is way better than what I imagined? Yeah. I mean, I think I've said this before, like the Barstool investment, um, you know, when we first invested in Dave, we always thought the biggest opportunity was going to be around sports betting, um, you know, back in 15 or whatever. So, you know, that was before sports betting was legalized. So we always thought like the way outsized return here could come around betting getting legalized. But look, the, the, the investment in Dave, has exceeded all of our wildest dreams. I mean, there's no question. There's no if, ands, and or I mean, buts about it. So, uh, and, and I think our, our partnership has been really good. And, and you know, what I, what I tell people also is like, if things were not good, Dave and Erica had a million, even though, you know, Dave always says there weren't a lot of people calling him when we first invested, there were a lot of people calling him the second time we invested. Like Dave and Erica could have gotten more money at a higher price from any fucking investor in the world would have wanted in and they doubled down on us. So things weren't completely I, I, screwed up. You know? My dad, not to bring it, he always says like, well, obviously when you start your own business, it's your own, you're doing the whole thing. Um, it's very different. A lot of, a lot of business fall apart when you take investment or whatever. So even though we talked about, we talked about really two uh, bumps in five years uh, for the most part. I mean, it, I, and, and it's been wildly successful. Not only did it, you know, outlive and exceed what churning guys, I mean, it out, I wasn't expecting this. Nobody realistically like, oh, this is going to be this huge. I, the, the original paper that we have was based on like a 50 million valuation. And that would have been like a wild success. So it totally, totally on both sides outlived and nothing, no partnerships perfect, but yeah, it's been totally. pretty good. I mean, they're still involved in, um, you know, other than the undressing, which I don't think even in the scheme of Dave yeah. Portnoy undressings, that was like a 5.7. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look at this. I don't know if you guys can see yeah, it. Yeah, can you we see, can see this, you. Eddie? Yeah. Here, here's my two year. Here's my two year old shirt sure. on, today. on brand. See? Yeah. It's, yeah. It says it's Saturdays are for the boys, okay. of, for the people just listening. All right, guys. Yeah. Saturday for the boys. Well, thanks, yeah. Mike. I, th I think I'm good if you are, Dave. Yeah, no, that was – the people like that. All right. See ya. All right. Appreciate it. See you guys. See ya. Bye. That was only – in the scheme of Dave Portnoy and dressings, it was like mid-fives. I don't think I broke out the F-bombs. Like, I only break out the F-bombs when I hate you. I, I – that negotiation, I viewed him as an agent, and I'm like, it's this or I'm gone. Do you think he likes you? Yes. Yeah. I do. Like, aside from, like, making him a ton of money? just like, Yeah, no, like, I think like, he does. Yeah. I mean, I like does. him. And he was a fan beforehand. Yeah, I just and don't I, know. I like all the churning guys. Anytime you're in business, I will say, <laughs> there was one line that, that Peter said to me that during the same it was the same thing because anything we're trying to get a little more money do whatever and he's like i gotta check with my investors and that may be because like i have investors to answer to which he does but it's like well tell me you just made a quarter billy on a fucking 12 000, 12 million dollar investment so i think they'll be okay with what i'm asking for oh wow so the number's out there yeah 12 is 12 is it did you just slip up 12 no everyone knew that the original investment was like 12 you would always say between 10 and 15 oh, i said though. it 12 it was 12 and a half okay okay yeah that I was the value they didn't put it all in that didn't go in my pocket they valued the company at that and like i think i got five million in cash and three million went into our bank account something like that 
Okay, and it was interesting to just listen back to that because a big part was you didn't have all the revenue streams like lined up, and they came in at a bad time because that's when the blackout tour crashed. So no, you could have gotten more if that. like I, I didn't. I wasn't a business guy. They valued Mike was a business guy and an agent trying to get the best deal, and he's like. I remember him saying, like, Toll Frat Move was worth more than us. At it, He's like, look at your fucking revenue. And it's like, well, our revenue wasn't crazy, but our profit was huge. Like, Toll Frat Move or whatever, nobody they, they weren't, like, making money. I was making millions because we weren't spending, like, wildly. And we were – it was all profit. So if you told me our valuation would have been based on revenue – I could have jacked it up like tenfold in a year if I wanted to. Yeah, and then the other big thing was I wanted to ask you because I don't, I don't think he would have you know, said much about it, but uh, you were pretty insulted, it seemed like, for his first offer. Can you tell us the first offer now? Seven and a half. Okay. I was, making, was, were... I was making close to a million and a half, two million a year in profit with this company. And it's like, well, why would I fucking sell it? But I, and P, this is a part, and some people believe it, and some won't. I could have been making millions, as he said, living a fairly easy life in Nantucket, even if, like, everything else fell apart. If KFC's like, I hate you. Big Cat's like, I hate you. I had the big enough brand. I was fucking huge in Boston. But I was trying to grow into what it is. And I took steps backwards, basically, like, with everything to move it way forward. And sometimes, you know how I get very mad here? And I get mad yes. when people don't defend me in this. I fucking risked almost the easiest lifestyle and a very good lifestyle to build this thing huge. So then when I feel like I'm getting attacked by my own people, that drives me absolutely because like I should I, it's like I should just fuck these people and stayed in fucking Nantucket making millions and let all these people fend for themselves. That like is what boils and rages in my head. But if you didn't take the risk and you didn't, like, gamble on that, though, you probably would have topped out way lower than what you're at, though. Wouldn't have even been close. I wouldn't have been close to what it is. I would have been, like, at the same for the next uh, however I want to do it. But it was a super comfortable lifestyle. But, yeah. like, we've made tons of people, like, decent money here, and I'm. it was the right move, but there was no guarantee for that. So it was, it was bringing in, like, $2 million, you said? Yeah. Revenue? Yeah. No, like, and then net what, profit. What would you take home? I don't know. I didn't like pay myself, so it was everything was like a mush mush. Yeah, because you guys talked about the horses in that podcast. Yeah, too. everything. It wasn't <laughs> like I was getting a check for a salary. They were the other guys were, but I wasn't. So okay. it's like I pay everything else, and whatever would stick in my account. And then it's as crazy as it sounds. I lose money gambling. The account would go down. I'd sell T-shirts. It was like pulling levers, like the Wizard of Oz. Doing extremely well before that. Like very oh, yeah. well. You're right. Yeah. yeah. No, it was killing it. I mean, we were. Like, and that we said that with Kearns knew it. He saw all our, our analytics and it was like, all right, this thing's fucking got this huge base. If we put some gas on it, it could explode. It is wild. His, uh, his memory of how we hired Erica and Ardini. <laughs> the fact he thought they found Erica is bananas. Unless, unless he set that meeting up without me knowing, but I've never heard that. I've told the story a hundred times. That's, he seems stunned. When I was like, what do you mean? Like, Erica and yeah. I, I clicked. We had an instant chemistry and bond. There's no chance Erica is here without me. Now, she wouldn't have come without churning probably either. I, it, but that's like, that's creating a hypothetical. I wouldn't have been looking. But, I mean, I got 70 interviews or so before Erica. All men, all through a recruiting firm, I've told this, that they hired I just happened to stumble across Erica by accident. That's crazy that he thinks. That's crazy. That got a little, little contentious well, about it, the Erica. I, I can't believe he thought that. <laughs> that was wild. Let's do some uh, inside Barstool news. And by the some, way, uh, the reason emails. it says me, it's like Erica is the best, right? But it's like she yeah. only comes here. She was super successful if she's like, okay, I can. I like Dave. I can work with Dave. Like that's a key component to getting great talent. Big time, big time. So let's get into the inside bar stool. Let's get into some listener emails. 